call on Government Order of the Day number five. Health and Safety Pike River Implementation Bill Committee Stage. I declare the House in Committee for consideration of the Health and Safety Pike River Implementation Bill. Uh, Mr Speaker. The House in Committee on the Health and Safety Pike River Implementation Bill, and the question is that Part 1 stand. Part Chairman. Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Chairman. It's a pleasure to take call on this, the uh, Health and Safety Pike River Implementation Bill. And uh, Part 1 has a lot of effectively administrative aspects to it. It sets up the WorkSafe organisation. Uh, it enables the efficient and effective and hopefully fair and just transfer of existing staff who employ, whose employer is the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment to the new legal employer which will be WorkSafe New Zealand. And I know some of the officials uh, in the Ministry who are anticipating the transfer of their employment to WorkSafe are excited by that prospect, are looking forward to it, are energised by it and that's what we need. So I, I commend the Minister for a set of provisions, including one I think that responded to an earlier SOP by uh, Brendan Horan that was very concerned about whether or not uh, some service-related entitlements would survive the transfer of employment. I see that that has been achieved, although my own view was that that had been achieved in the original bill, but then uh, Mr Horan has a level of wisdom and sagacity that uh, often eludes most of us. So um, that is good, <laughs> Mr um, Chairman. I, there is an issue, however, which I think does um, cause or call for further consideration and comment, and indeed is the subject of an SIP by myself, and that is the governing board of WorkSafe New Zealand. One of the critical things that came out of the Royal Commission of Inquiries uh, report on the Pike River, uh, Pike River tragedy uh, was their comment about uh, tri tripartitism and they drew upon the wealth of knowledge and literature that now prevails about what happens in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom has very much blazed the, the trail and led the way when it comes to health and safety governance at an institutional level and at an enterprise level. And they did that of course a long time ago. They set up their dedicated health and safety body called the Health and Safety Executive in 1974 after a succession of workplace uh, catastrophes including the Aberfan coal mining disaster in Wales in the 1960s and they came up with the model that said well even at the institutional governance level at the governing board of the Health and Safety Executive we should have true tripartitism equal representation of employers, of workers through their unions and obviously the government. And the bill as it is currently worded allows a board of um, at least five but no more than nine and then sets a range of criteria for appointees uh, and only one of them refers to uh, the members having experience in or capability in, amongst other things, perspectives of workers. Perspectives of workers? What does that mean? The only real and genuine and authentic perspective of a worker comes from a worker's representative themselves. And I think what is important about tripartitism, what makes it powerful and enduring, is that the, the tripartite representatives come from the constituency that they are representing themselves. It's not a ministerial appointee. It comes from the constituency themselves. And so, Mr Chairman, I have proposed an SOP that um, does away with the current wording of the bill but replaces it with a new uh, sub-clause 1 or subsection 1 of the new section 7 and establishes a board comprising three representatives appointed by the organisation recognised for the time being as the peak body representing workers. That is the CTU and, of course, recognised uh, as the peak body uh, 
Um, we have that already because the government already recognises peak bodies for workers and for employers. For workers, it is the Council of Trade Unions. For employers, it is Business New Zealand. And the government presently recognises those two uh, peak organisations for the purposes of representation at the ILO, the International Labour Organisation, an organisation that is itself dedicated to tripartite representation. Um, not, not, not an equal balance. It's 50% workers and employers at 25% each and 50% for governments. Well, this is a tripartitism that, represent, that, that, that sets up equal representation. So there is a representative or three representatives from the peak, peak organisation for workers, three representatives from the peak organisation for employers and, Mr Chairman? Uh, Andrew Little. And three representatives of government. And that I think is genuinely tripartite. The government um, can uh, fashion its, its representatives. It can allow for some independence, of course, uh, and that is very important. And uh, a consequential amendment to that, to effect that, is also to delete a couple of the references in uh, the subsection 2 to the new section 7. Um, it is with a genuinely tri tripartite body. It is not necessary to refer explicitly to uh, the... Uh, or make the references in paragraph D and paragraph DA of that subsection, that is to perspectives of workers and perspectives of employers. It will still be necessary in terms of the government appointees to you know, ensure that there is public sector governance, knowledge and experience, central government process, knowledge and experience, health and safety, all the rest of it. So, Mr Chairman, the purpose of this is very clear. It is to truly reflect uh, what is, in my view, what the Royal Commission was getting at, and that is genuine tripartitism. So that the, all those interests coming together, even at that senior level, the policy making level, um, and, the, uh, and, and with all the powers that WorkSafe New Zealand will have, is to ensure that there is a full balance of, uh, of perspectives taken, and um, that it is not driven entirely, nor entirely, totally accountable just to government. This is a body that must ref reflect and represent those elements that make up uh, workplaces and industries in New Zealand, and that is workers and employers, with uh, the government providing that overlying and perhaps that overarching uh, uh, provision there as well. Uh, so, Mr Chairman, I would urge members to vote for that uh, so that we can, you know, this is an opportunity for us as we establish WorkSafe to establish a state-of-the-art organisation as we move towards state-of-the-art health and safety provision, health and safety regulation and health and safety regulation enforcement. That, I think, is the genuine ambition of the government. It was the genuine ambition of the previous minister, Kate Wilkinson. It was the genuine ambition of the interim minister, Chris Finlayson. And I believe, I'm prepared to infer, that it is the genuine ambition of the current minister, Simon Bridges. And so I would urge the government and the minister to look closely and carefully at that, um, uh, that amendment and support it. I want to make one other comment, and that is about advisory groups. I made this comment before. Um, it is a good idea to have advisory groups, but the advisory groups provided for in the new Section 8 um, of, the, um, of the bill really have no teeth. And really, if they are to be meaningful, in addition to having representatives from the relevant industries and having people who are knowledgeable in those industries who can assist with the preparation and drafting of good regulations and good codes of practice and setting good standards, um, then it is, uh, it, it is preferable that they have a little more teeth as well. And beyond just advising WorkSafe, the Board of WorkSafe, that perhaps their power should be uh, a little more meaningful than that. Nevertheless, it is, it, a, it is a good idea in terms of industry engagement to get the best possible regulation and the best possible standards, to be able to delegate that to, um, to advisory boards. But I would just uh, uh, perhaps ask the Minister how he sees that operating to ensure that those advisory groups and the role that they play is genuinely meaningful, will genuinely engage the industries and interest people uh, to get them on board to do it. And I look forward to the Minister's uh, response and contribution to this part as we debate part one. This is the setting up, <coughs> laying the foundation for New WorkSafe New Zealand, which will be the flag bearer for health and safety in New Zealand, the dedicated agency that we have been asking for all this time. 
that both the Royal Commission on Pike River endorsed, that the recent Independent Advisory Committee endorsed. And so, um, uh, Mr Chairman, it is good if we take this opportunity to get it right. And I think there is a willingness within this House tonight uh, to do that, and I hope the Minister will listen very carefully, will support the change that's been put up for the governance, will ask, answer the query about how the advisory groups will function in practice so that we get the best quality input uh, from across industry and from the workforces within that ind industry. On that point, sir, uh, Mr Chairman, as I say, we look forward to supporting this bill and seeing New Zealand at last take that great and very important step into the future with the best possible health and safety administration that we can muster. Thank you. Mr Chairman. Uh, the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. And, uh